and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Fargo Season 2, Episode 5. I'm so excited. This season so far has been fantastic. And last episode in particular was an absolute doozy. It left us on a really big cliffhanger with um, Ma Gerhardt's It's War. Which, by the way, Gene Smart acted the fuck out of that line. Really, you play it back. Just listen, I've listened to it like five or six times over now. And it's like defiant, but it's also fatalistic. It's emotional, but it's like still puts the fear of God into you. It's really incredibly portrayed. Like, try and say that line and deliver the emotion that she delivers in it. It's almost, I, I can't do it, I've tried. So that was great. And when I think of that episode, that's the thing that I think of, is the conclusion. But obviously we had so much other stuff going on. We've got Lou's final warning to Ed and Peggy, which was completely ignored by Peggy. It's sort of like, you're kind of like pitying them as much as you are you know, yelling at them to just get real, get serious and sort the shit out. Because they are kind of comic relief, as well as this their story being stressful. Like, it is really, really funny. And um, I, I'm absolutely loving that. I think now it's how is everyone going to end up in Sioux Falls? Because we had the sort of mini reveal from, is it Constance? The, um, the pervy boss at the, the salon. She should not be letting on her member of staff like that, period. But, you know, God loves a trier. And she's very trying. But this Life Spring seminar that they keep yakking on about, $500, by the way, in 1979? What's that today's money? Like $3,000? Like, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot for a weekend in Sioux Falls but Peggy spent the money anyway which means Ed hasn't got the money for the butchers and now they've had that warning from Lou which I'm thinking takes them to Sioux Falls I think he goes with her as a sort of get out of town thing and then it's a little bit like the wacky races where everyone is just chasing each other. All the way down to Sioux Falls. You know, Ed and Peggy here. The Gerhards now know through Hansi that Rye has definitely been killed by by Ed or by Ed and Peggy, you know, whoever. They don't know exactly who killed him, but they know from the buckle. So you've got Ed and Peggy on the run down to Sioux Falls, and then you're going to have maybe Hansi and maybe, I don't know who, from the Gerhards, because they're also going to be opening a war with Kansas City. So I don't know how they're going to want to divide their resources, but we're going to find out. So somehow they end up after Ed and Peggy, and then maybe Kansas City comes after them and the police are following all of them. Yeah, it's it's going to be a doozy. I know it is and I'm really excited. So no more of a recap for me in that. If I've missed anything, it's just because it's not burning a hole in my mind right now. Um, let's get on and have a look at this episode. Let's have at it. What is so funny about that shot? They do it in Little Miss Sunshine as well, where Bush just goes across, and the men who stare at goats, and it makes me laugh every single time. My father was a salesman. Ladies' shoes. Hey, Hansy. Shit. They are preparing for a real war. Everything okay? Just a little housekeeping. Let's kill ourselves some deer. Oh, they're just going hunting. Oh, my sweet summer child. 
paid a higher price for freedom and done more to advance the dignity of man than any people who ever lived on this earth. But if you look around, you may not see many signs of that dignity. Crime is up, jobs are scarce. You have to stand in a line just to fill up your car. Is that Ronald Reagan? Oh, yes! Wasn't the best impression I've ever heard. Oh, shh. Yeah, oh. it's over. You run down on the street and finished off at a second location. You sure? Shit. Who? Butcher. A butcher? Down Laverne. Butcher Laverne. That's what they call him. He's a contract man at a out of Kansas City. I want to hear it from him. Kid was marked. Probably the day he left. Butcher ambushed him after the judge. Tried to grab him, probably. I knew it. We're not going to make the first move. But if these Kansas City mooks come at you shooting, we'll cut the goddamn nose off their face. Dottie's going to set something up. See? But she's already gone to war. What's the point of this? Making sure she doesn't backtrack? Joe. There's not a politician in this state wouldn't take my call in the middle of dinner. No, and you and me, we're really going to be pals. A leader who will unleash their great strength and remove the roadblocks government has put in their way. A Chandler. Once again, see honor placed above political expediency. <laughs> to see government, once again, the protector of liberties, not the distributor of gifts and privilege. <gasps> government should uphold and not undermine those institutions which are Bring custodians the of the very values upon which civilization is founded. Oh, it's Religion, fucking off! Education, and above all, family. <laughs> no! Oh, shit! Oh, God. No one can cast it at that funeral. Ah! Wait. Oh! What the fuck? We who are privileged to be... Oh, right, Pete Kitchen Brothers is a fucking over for me. rendezvous with destiny. Wait. Since the moment... Pause. Is... Pause. Guys, I thought the Kitchen Brothers were in this thing to the finale. I can't believe it. Dead. Bad news for Mr. and Mrs. Kitchen. Fuck. That was insane. Like, it shocked me so much when that gunfire thing opened. I just froze. Oh my God, that was amazing. Play. 1630 when John Winthrop a troubled and afflicted mankind looks to us. We're fine. Morality and above all, responsible liberty for every individual. Kansas City is over, guys. They're fucking over. That we will become that shining city on a hill. This rendezvous oh, with mate. destiny. Thank you. But I'm not shaking his hand. Why not, girl? Because, honey, the man made a movie with a monkey. It wouldn't be dignified. Well, hello. I love Jane Cattle, Queen of Montana. <laughs> well, thank you. Not many people like that film. <laughs> if you get the chance, ask them if it's true that Joan Crawford had crabs. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? He's a governor now. And it would never be appropriate to ask that question. We got him. I can't believe Kansas.
and to see are just dead. Well, the, you know, where was Mike Milligan? Uloto. Oh, yeah. Milligan. No, he wasn't there. You can bet they're going to come back at us hard. <laughs> I want this butcher dead in Laverne. No mercy. Which one was Virgil? Oh, Ed. He didn't even mean it. Pause. I feel so bad for Ed. This guy just came home. He wanted to have sex with his wife, maybe some hamburger helper. And he ends up utterly, utterly fucked. I really hope he makes it out of this alive. I can't see how right now, but I really hope he does. Play. Sorry, are we out of coffee? Is she a hoarder? Where are we going? The f to California. She's lost it. Constance saw. Yeah. Saw so what? The, the car. car. After you cleaned it, but before we crashed it again. She knows about the accident. I don't think she'll tell, but how can we know for sure, you know? And, and these ghouls on the Kamloo said, hun. No. You said we agreed, clean it up, and everything would be. I know, hun. No. <sighs> we, we did this for a reason, yep. Peg. Whatever comes, we'll deal with it, or it'll deal with us. But I'm buying the shop, and we're starting a, a family. But. Oh, not happening. It's too late to get the money back for the course. And, and, and you said Bud had to have it by Friday. We'll figure it out. That's what people do. They figure things out. Stay together. Make it work. Oh, Ed. He's just a simple chap, isn't he, really? Laverne, Minnesota. Ed Blumquist. He's posing as the town butcher. Do you know who that guy from? A Gerhardt. He killed a Gerhardt, so it should be one of us. The real boss would know that. Oh! <laughs> you walk him in, he pulls the trigger. Anything goes wrong, you fix it, you understand? Oh my god, he's fucking. Pulls! Pulls! That prick! I was angry the moment I saw that guy and I was like, why am I so angry? What do I know him from? Fucking The Handmaid's Tale. What the? Get your hand off of you creep. He's the commander that takes over. Oh, I can't tell you because of spoilers. Watch The Handmaid's Tale, watch my reactions to The Handmaid's Tale, and you will understand my feelings for this guy. I know he's just an actor, but... Handmaid's Tale survivors, you know what I'm talking about. Play. My mother could find the cloud in every silver lining. <laughs> it's cute. Mine smiles all the time. Like some ghoul. I think it's because Dad hits her when she looks sad. God. I see thing one, where's thing two? Dead. Your Indian killed him. Killed a lot of people. I didn't know that was happening. Nobody told me. Why are you there? You believe me. Right? Well, that does not speak to your morality, my dear. She was a true gloom, my mother. I'm nervous. For a laugh, I wrote on her tombstone. Here lies Barbara Milligan, happy till the end. Me, on the other hand. 
I'm an optimist. So when I see this... Go. Oh, fuck! I don't think the sky is falling. Head in a box! I think that serves the sign of opportunity knocking. I want to know what they're going to do before they do it. Every time. Shit. She is damn lucky to be alive. I can't believe you let her go. I don't even think she's worth it as a... Like a source of information. Sorry. Pause. I think Mike is making a big mistake sending her back. But I am not a gangster. What the fuck do I know? So one kitchen brother is still alive. Okay, I thought they were both dead. Obviously Mike was out of the fray. Um, everybody loves Raymond Mann is toast. They've taken a really big hit. I'm really interested to see what they got to come back with because frankly the Gerhardts just made them look like a bunch of amateurs didn't they really they did so you know Mike has lost points everyone in Kansas City has lost points right now I'm gonna need to see a better effort from them <laughs> play how's your oh. day then uh you oh it's a shit sandwich up here Got 12 dead in the woods, half Gerhardt, half Kansas City, plus a local zoning commissioner with half his face in the woods. Pause. Booth. Sorry, another point I've got to make. You guys all told me that I totally hadn't remembered that Gus Grimley's boss from season one is Ben Schmidt. That's Ben Schmidt. So this is like a young version of, of Gus Grimley's boss. And I just thought, how fucking rich. That cop who was all up in Grimley's face and kind of taking the piss out of him, kind of being fairly useless. I mean, Ben Schmidt isn't going to be winning any, you know, Policeman of the Year awards. He's a complete baby. So I like that. I like that we've seen that, you know, he's actually, you know, at who he really was in the past is not quite as he presents himself now. He'll probably go and do something marvellous now. I'll be like, mm, damn it. Play. Good Christ. Yeah, this thing's gonna get worse before it gets better. I'm really not sure why you're making all this effort. Can I buy the shop? Be my own boss. And? And what? That's the American dream. What's the point? Just gonna die anyway. <laughs> Camus says, knowing we're all gonna die makes life a joke. So what, you just, you just give up? You could kill yourself, get it over with. <laughs> I'm gonna go in the back now, away from this nonsense. <laughs> so please let me know if that's back. I will. Pause. I totally forgot to say at the beginning that the episode title is The Gift of the Magi. Magi is plural for ma magus. So the story in the Bible of the three wise men was originally the three magi and it's more recently relates to a story that's kind of the story of wonderful love and it's basically a husband and wife getting each other Christmas presents and they're really poor they got not got two pennies to rub together the wife has like a dollar and she so she sells her hair she has all her hair cut off and sells it for twenty dollars so that she can get her husband like a platinum like fob for his watch like a chain for his watch and he's he's trying to find the perfect present for her and he comes home and he's like, oh, what? All her hair is gone. And um, and she's like, I did this so that I could I could get your present. She's really worried that he's going to be like, I don't love you anymore. You're bald and weird. But he says, I don't believe it. And he's got her a bunch of cones was his present for her. And so she's like, well, at least, you know, you can use your the chain for your watch and the thing is he sold his watch to get the cones so, 
So the efforts that they've both made for each other have made each other's presence redundant. He has no watch for which to need a chain and she has no hair for which to need a brush with some combs. But instead of being all pissy about it, they're just like, they really get what the lengths each other were willing to go to, to, you know, provide, to provide some, to let the, to let each other know how loved that they are. And so they realise that actually they, they, their love is absolutely solid. How beautiful is that story though? I really like that. So anyway, that's, that's the background. <clears throat> totally out of order i only remembered to say it because little miss over there was on about camus and that was myth of sisyphus so onward play yes i'm dead she's funny that girl i like her don't overthink it just point and shoot if he keeps moving you shoot him again simple all right oh it's I didn't think this is going to go. <gasps> no! Don't kill the girl. She hasn't even finished the book, guys. One more thing. No witnesses. No! 